You're listening to Freedom Fast Lane, presented by Capitalism.com. This is the show about building businesses and investing in profits so that you can live life on your terms. As many of us know, choosing a business partner is one of the most important decisions you can make in your business venture. Choosing the wrong partner can completely destroy your chances of having a profitable, successful business. But choosing the right business partner can open you up to possibilities that you would never have on your own. In this episode, entrepreneur, investor, and author Matthew Paulson will be teaching us the qualities he looks for in a business partner and how you can spot them yourself. This episode is packed full of useful information, so enjoy Matthew Paulson on Freedom Fast Lane Podcast. Hey Fast Laners, Matthew Paulson here. Ryan asked me to take over this episode of the Freedom Fast Lane Podcast to talk about business partnerships. Now, I know it's not the most exciting topic in the world, but it is one of the areas of business where entrepreneurs just make a ton of mistakes. Now, everyone that is an entrepreneur that I know has been in a business partnership that either ended badly or was just a total waste of time for everyone involved. If you haven't been in a bad partnership personally, I bet you do know someone who has. So that is what we are going to talk about today. Uh, If you don't know me, I run a financial media company called MarketBeat.com. We publish a daily investment newsletter to more than 445,000 subscribers, and we do just under $3 million a year in annual revenue. I was also a speaker at Freedom Fastlane Live last December, and I hosted another episode of Freedom Fastlane in January about how entrepreneurs should invest their money, so definitely check that episode out as well. I also host a weekly video podcast called Startup Q&A where I answer business questions from entrepreneurs. So if you want to check that out, that is startupqna.co. Uh, in my main business, MarketBeat, I don't actually have any partners. I own 100% of that business, but I do have partners in my three other companies, though. Uh, GoGo Photo Contest, U.S. Golf TV, and Falls Angel Fund all have multiple partners. Uh, in GoGo Photo Contest and U.S. Golf TV, I have two other partners in those businesses. Falls Angel Fund is actually a partnership of 31 accredited investors. Uh, where we all get together and we make angel deal, angel investment deals together. And I happen to manage that fund. They may be the chairman for whatever reason. Uh, so obviously it's very important to have very good structures in place when you're in a business with, you know, 30 other people that have the same voting rights that you do. Um, you know, having the, the good, um, operating, a good operating agreement and, um, good relationships with your partners is very important when you have that many partners. Um, but I guess, for, you know, for the purposes of this episode, um, I want to kind of just take, take a step back and, and discuss, uh, you know, what we're really talking about when we talk about business partnerships. Um, I'm not talking about like joint ventures or service agreements where um, you're just working together on, with somebody on some small project. I am talking about, you know, a true business partnership, you know, an agreement where you and somebody else own a significant piece of equity in a company that you're all working on together to make successful. successful. So it's you. And other owners are working together, the same business. Uh, maybe you have, say, the same equity or similar equity, or somebody owns 20%, somebody owns 80%, but you all own a piece of, of a company, and that is really what we're talking about today. Obviously, there are other types of part, you know, business relationships that you have, but that is a conversation for another day. Um, I really want to dive into this episode and get going by, by sharing the story of my friend. Uh, I'm going to change his name. We'll call him Don for the purposes of this episode. But he runs a local construction company where he and his uh, team remodel bathrooms and kitchens. Uh, that's really all they do. Um, and they do a good job at it. And there, Don is he's a great sales guy. Um, he's booked out for months at a time. He could easily be doing you know seven figures and billing each year if he could just figure out how to find the right operational team to execute on his sale. So um, you know, he asked me maybe a couple of weeks ago now that if I'd have coffee with him. Um, you know, to help him over some different partnership opportunities that he had for his business. So I went ahead and I met with Don. Uh, the biggest problem that he was running into at the time was really just operations. Uh, great at sales, having a hard time managing projects. Um, you know, just staying organized, keeping track of all the moving pieces. He just wasn't good at that. He was a sales guy. Um, so really he needed a CEO or a project manager or a lead project manager or something like that for his business. And he told me that he had two potential uh, business partnership opportunities that might be, you know, a solution to this problem. 
you know, the first was um, a business growth acceleration company that approached him to be a partner in his company. Uh, that team consisted of a marketer, an attorney, and somebody with some construction experience. So naturally, you might think that's a good fit. Um, they wanted to take a stake in his company and a royalty on sales for helping out with paperwork, uh, doing contracts, um, and you know, having contacts in the construction industry, doing some project management work. Uh, Don said this idea was interesting to him, but he just had a really, or they just had a really hard time communicating what they would actually do for him. And then the other partnership opportunity was a local painting company that wanted to get into the construction business. Uh, they had a nice sales machine, and you know they hire a bunch of college kids each summer to work on their painting crews. And Don thought, you know, those skills could help get his business organized and manage all of the projects he's selling because if you can hire three or four hundred college kids and get them all to show up at a house and paint, you know, you can probably manage some construction guys and, and manage those projects as well. Um, I asked Don a few piercing questions um, about these partnerships and, and by the end of the conversation he realized that, you know, probably neither of these are the right thing to pursue for him, but I think there are some, some really good lessons that we can um, take based on the questions that I asked him. You know, the first thing I asked him was, you know, do you know, like, and trust either of these groups of people enough to, to marry them or at least let them move into your house for the next decade? Um, you really have to know people your business partners with just about as well as the person you're going to marry. And if you don't know them that well enough, you should probably get to know them better before you become business partners with them. Um, you know, a business partnership really is like a marriage. Um, you know, when you're business partners with someone, you spend just a ton of time working with them, uh, working on the business, you know, going to meetings, um, and going to conferences. You're going to see a lot of that person. And you just really have to be around them for a long period of time without getting sick of them. And that is not a hurdle that every potential business partner can get across. Um, when you're in business with somebody, you're going to see their good parts. You're going to see their bad parts. And frankly, you'll just see everything in between. So any personality flaws that they have, they are going to come out in how they deal with you and how they manage their aspect of the business. So you really kind of need to know everything about somebody's character and their work ethic and what skills they bring to the table before you go into business with them. Um, you know, when you're working together, you're sharing money, you're moving toward a common goal. Um, you know, you just don't trust your money to everybody. So you really do have to trust your business partners and trust that they have the same vision that you do and are moving your company towards that common vision. So uh, I asked Don this question. He said, you know, I just don't know either of these parties that well enough. Um, you know, they're, they're interesting, but, you know, I don't know them as well as I know my wife or close to as well as my wife. So, um, you know, for me, I kind of told him, you know, if I were in your situation, that would be enough for me to not move forward with either of these, you know, potential opportunities, these, these partnerships until you really got to know these people because, you know, it, it's, you know, a business partnership is prob pretty much the same time commitment as a marriage. And you're going to see a ton of these people, you're going to work with them forever. So you really do have to know, like, and trust some of, you know, people that you're going to work with. Um, really that well. I mean, it's a really high bar to cross, but, uh, um, you know, if you're only doing business with people that you really know and trust, you're going to avoid a lot of the common pitfalls that um, happen when you're um, in a bad business partnership. You can prevent a lot of those things by only partnering with people that you really do know, like, and trust. Uh, the second question that I asked Don um, about these potential partnership opportunities was, you know, what kind of value do either of these partnerships bring to the table that you just can't get by hiring an employee? Uh, if you're gonna have somebody as an equity partner in your business, you really need, they need to really be bringing something to the table that's just not something you can easily hire. So maybe it's a, a marketing strategy, maybe they're a great project manager, or they just have skills that you don't see every day in an employee. Um, uh, so, you know, before I asked Don this question, I kind of already knew the answer. You know, he didn't really need a partnership. He needed a project manager that he paid 50 grand a year to to manage his jobs. Um, now, certainly 50 grand is, or whatever it was, I don't know what people in the construction industry make. It's not a small chunk of change, but, you know, it is going to be a heck of a lot cheaper than whatever it is giving somebody equity in your business. Um, you know, when you pay somebody a salary, you're giving them a set amount of dollars per year. But when you hand somebody equity in your business, you're effectively promising them a share of the profit for really as long as your business is in existence. Not as long as they work for you, but as long as you are in business. So, 
Maybe you give somebody 10% of your equity this year and then they quit, quit on you two years from now. If you're in business 25 years from now, you know, you're still paying them 10% of the profit each year. And gosh darn, I bet you I wish you had spent that 50 grand instead of giving them equity because they are going to get their share of the profit for literally forever as long as your business continues to exist unless you buy them out, which would be also more expensive than that $50,000 or whatever the salary is. Uh, you know, I, I guess the point is, you know, paying for stuff with equity, you know, paying for services and expertise with equity is just, it's really expensive over the long term. And you just have to gauge whether or not it's worth having a partner that can really bring something that an employee can't bring, or if the skills are more of a commodity and you should just hire an employee uh, to provide those skills and that work and that expertise. Um, you know, I, I guess, you know, as a successful entrepreneur, you know, there are going to be a ton of people that want to partner with you and JV with you because people just love to attach themselves to success. So, um, you know, there's not going to be a shortage of people that want to be business partners with you. Um, you know, there are plenty of people that are going to want to attach themselves to you as a partner just because you're successful. You know, sometimes this works out well, but, you know, it does end up being a waste of time just as often. Um, so I guess, you know, the point is you should never just get into a business partnership because somebody approaches you. Um, you know, you wouldn't marry the first person that proposes to you right off the street. So you really need to think about business partnerships in the same way. And, you know, just because you're getting approached doesn't mean it's something you should pursue. You know, you should really only consider doing a business partnership when you couldn't see yourself starting a business without that person you want to partner with or because they offer a very specific expertise and talent that you just cannot get by hiring an employee. Uh, Google Photo Contest is a great example of a business where I legitimately needed partners in. Um, so Google Photo Contest is a piece of fundraising software for animal welfare groups. Um, the way it works is that animal shelters can use our SaaS platform to host photo contests um, to raise money. So people will submit pictures of their cats, dogs, or whatever animal, and then they try to get their friends to vote for them um, in a contest, and then it costs like a dollar a vote. And then at the end of the contest, you know, whoever is able to amass the most votes for their entry gets some kind of prize that the animal shelter raises. So, you know, every animal shelter can raise five to 10 grand doing these things. You know, we take maybe eight or 9% of that cut and we've built kind of a nice little business there. Um, I love the business, but I literally don't know anything about the animal welfare industry. Uh, my experience with animals is we had cats when I was growing up. Um, I don't have a pet now. I don't know anybody at a humane society. Um, I don't know, I don't really understand how animal welfare people think. I don't know how to talk to those people. I don't know what their problems are. I just don't think like they do. Uh, but my partners in the business, uh, Jason and Stevie Shea, though, they, they totally get the space. They've, they've got five dogs in their house. Um, Jason sits on the board of local humane society. Um, they had been doing this business model locally with the local humane society. Um, you know, they just live and breathe that industry and they had expertise in the business that, um, I just didn't have. Um, certainly, I bring a lot to the table with marketing and finance and, you know, the stuff that I'm really good at and some of the software development stuff I did initially. But, you know, I could have not started that business without them and I wouldn't have even tried because, you know, they just understand the animal welfare industry so much better than I do. And they like working with people in that industry and they just bring stuff to the table that is necessary for that business to succeed. I literally could have never done it myself. So, um, you know, in that company, Jason, Stevie and I, we each own a third of the business. It is just a, a great little company and, you know, our unique combination of skills together has made something that neither of us could have frankly made separately. Um, so I guess, you know, moving on, uh, the third question that I asked Don was, um, so of these opportunities that have presented themselves to you, um, would you consider either of them to be an opportunity where you're saying, hell yes, I would do this? It's you know, something I couldn't possibly not do. Um, you know, something that you're super excited about, you really want to do. You just can't wait to move forward. You know, is that how you feel about either of these partnerships? Um, and you know, the answer to that was was probably no for him. Um, but you know, given kind of the volume of requests that you know a successful entrepreneur is going to get for partnerships, you know, you really can only say yes to a handful of the best opportunities. So for me, any business partnership that I'm looking at really has to be a, you know a heck yes, hell yes opportunity. So if I'm looking at a partnership, you know, I really have to have no reservations about it. I would be really bummed out if I didn't do it. I just literally could not see myself not doing it. You know, that is kind of the, the bar that you have to hit for a business partnership with me. 
um, you know, the idea of, of hell yes or no or heck yes or no. Um, that came from Derek Sivers. Um, he was a CD baby guy. And I just think that's a great filter to put on any kind of opportunity. You know, we live in a world where just there's so much opportunity and things you could do. Um, you could go back to school. You could go take a different job. You could meet your friends for drinks tonight or you could uh, volunteer doing something. Um, anything in life, you just have more. You probably have more opportunities than you do time. So really, you only can do the things that you are absolutely fired up about and uh, you just can't not do. Um, I actually get about two or three requests you know, every week uh, to be partners with somebody or invest in their company or speak at their event. And it's just it's impossible to say yes to them. Um, you know, I'd love to invest in a thousand companies. It's just I have 168 hours in a week like everybody else. I've got two children under five. I need to sleep at night. You know, I really only have so much time to to work on businesses. So I have to say the no to almost everything so that I have time for my kids, time for my businesses, and just the opportunities that I care the most about. You know, I've even had to turn Ryan down a couple of times because, you know, I love Ryan. He's a great guy, but they just weren't quite, you know, hell yes opportunities. Um, so really that that is kind of the bar um, that you have to hit with a business partnership. Um, you really have to be so excited about it. And your partner is too. I mean, you both have to be really excited about it, willing to work really hard together for a long period of time. Um, and just have it be that that's the one thing that you, you really want to do and you really want to do it with the other person. It just really does have to be that kind of heck yes, let's do this, no reservations opportunity. Uh, you know, finally, I, I say to my buddy Don, it's like, you know, he didn't seem too excited about any of these opportunities. You know, I think before we sat down for coffee, you kind of already knew that neither of these opportunities were a good fit for you. So, you know, why are you even considering them? You know, it was my question to him. And his answer that he thought, you know, maybe some magic would happen where my, you know, his company would be, you know, more successful if he just had some partners that were working on it with him. In other words, he thought, you know, a partnership might be a magic bullet to fix business problems. Um, of course, you know, it doesn't take a genius to realize that, you know, there are no magic bullets or shortcuts in business to fix all of your company's problems. You know, being an entrepreneur is a multi-year slog and um, it's a lot of work and, Adding somebody else to the table is probably going to, um, as a partner, is probably actually going to create more problems than it fixes in the short term. Um, so don't think of a partnership as a way to fix all of your business problems. It will actually probably introduce more problems in the short term because you have a whole other person to deal with that has their own opinions and ideas and skills that wants to work on the business. So um, never think that just signing up for a partnership is going to be a magic bullet in your business. Uh, now, before we kind of wrap up, I want to talk a little bit about partnership agreements. Um, you really do need to have a partnership agreement in every business that you have partners in. Now, I'm not talking about like a 50-page document written by attorneys that covers every possibility of everything that could ever go wrong in a business. You know, frankly, if you need a 50-page legal document to be partners in a business with somebody, you probably don't know them well enough and trust them enough to be partners with them. Uh, what I am talking about really is a just a two or three page document that you both sign that outlines some of the basics about the business just to make sure that everyone is on the same page. Uh, so in my partnerships uh, documents, I include maybe about 10 things that I really think should be in these things. Um, so first, um, you know, in your partnership agreement, um, it should list out the responsibilities of everybody um, that owns part of the business and what they're responsible for. You know, who is going to be in charge of sales? Who's in charge of operations? Who's doing the bookkeeping? Who's in charge of legal stuff? Um, you know, what are the roles? How are they, they equal? How much time is somebody supposed to spend in the business every week? Um, you should also include what happens if somebody wants to get out or if somebody dies or, you know, what happens if somebody gets hit by a bus? Um, you know, does the person's spouse get to vote in a business? Or, you know, do, you know, those are questions that do come up. You should write down who owns what percentage of the business. You should write how and when profits will be distributed. So somebody might want to take profits monthly and somebody might else want to just leave the money in the business to grow it. So you got to figure that out ahead of time. Uh, you should write down whether or not anybody is taking a salary, what that will be, and how that will change over time. If anybody's putting money into the company, you should write that down. Um, you should talk about what um, rights people have in a business. Um, you know, you should talk about where the buck stops. So if there's a disagreement, 
Um, you know, how is that dispute going to be settled or who gets to overrule the other person? And finally, you should write whether or not there is going to be a non-compete, um, you know, to prevent somebody from quitting and then going starting a competing business. Uh, so those are kind of the 10 things um, that I like to put in a partnership agreement. And kind of the reason that I like to have all this stuff on paper is because it clearly outlines just what everyone's rights and responsibilities are ahead of time. And then there just can't be any real disagreement about ownership issues because it is all on paper. It's all signed by everybody and it's just there plain for everyone to see. Um, when you have you know kind of a verbal agreement, sometimes people's memory are fuzzy and you might remember a conversation differently than the way they remembered it. So just having it on paper is kind of a nice way to make sure there's no confusion about, you know, what you had all agreed to. Um, you know, it really should only take you to put a couple of hours to put one of these things together. You know, if you've kind of already verbally agreed to the major components of your partnership, there are plenty of templates online for this kind of thing that can get you started. But just, you know, having these things on paper, it really will ensure that everyone is exactly on the same page and knows what their rights are and what their responsibilities are. Um, so let's let's recap a little bit. Um, first, you should really only partner with people that you know, like, and trust enough to marry or let them live in your house for 10 years. You're going to see people that you're in business with a lot. You're going to work with them a lot. You're going to see a lot of them. Uh, you're sharing money with them. Um, you're moving toward a common mission with them. So there should be a really high bar in your level of knowledge of the person, whether you like them and whether you trust them before you go into business with somebody. Uh, finally, make sure that you only do partnership deals with somebody who brings something to the table that you just can't get by hiring an employee. Hiring an employee. Um, somebody that your partner's with really has to be doing as much work as you are in a business and bring something to the table in terms of skills or expertise or money that you just don't have. Um, you know, it, you're not going to give equity to your, to your customer service person. You can hire that job out. Um, so make sure that um, they really are bringing your partners really are bringing something to the table. Uh, finally, you know, make sure any partnership opportunity that you're considering is kind of a, a heck yes opportunity and it's just something that you know you couldn't see yourself doing or couldn't see yourself not doing. It's just something that you you really feel like you have to do. It's something you're super excited about, something you want to do. And then finally, make sure to have a good partnership agreement in place with all of the partners of your business so that there is no confusion down the line about who owns what or how profit's going to get sent out or how to settle a dispute. It's always good to have that in writing up front. Um, you know, these kind of four issues are really the root causes of most partnership problems. Things tend to go wrong when you're in a partnership, when you, you don't know the person well enough, or the person isn't as excited as you are about the partnership, or if there's just not a good partnership agreement in place. You know, if you can do these four kind of things right, um, you know, only going to business with people you know, like, and trust, um, have something where somebody's really bringing something to the table, you know, it's a hell yes opportunity, a good partnership agreement. If you do those four things kind of right, you really will av avoid the vast majority of problems that come up in business partnerships. Uh, so I think that's, that's pretty much it for this episode. So if you enjoyed it and you like some of the ways that I think about business, uh, go on iTunes. I have a show called Startup Q&A. Um, on that show, I answer people's business questions uh, that people submit over email and Facebook. So definitely check that out. Um, you can also find the latest episodes at startupqna.co. If you want to email me or get in touch, I'm really not that hard to find on the internet. You can email me at matt at mattpawson.com if you feel so inclined. Uh, and with that, I will turn it back over to Ryan. Hey, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the show. As you can probably tell, this is not Ryan. My name is Tyler Atwell, and I was the host of today's episode. If you found value in the information shared or want to start a business and invest the profits, go to www.freedomfastlane.com. And subscribe for our email list and we'll send you every episode as soon as it's published. If you have any friends who you think would find this information valuable, share it with them as well. Thanks again, everybody. We'll catch you next time on Freedom Fast Lane Podcast.